All right, so I need to figure out how to get this bell housing to look like that one laying on the floor there. So we got some more goodies from Toosley. A Junk 4L60, imagine that. So this bell housing will go around our Audi bell housing. We need that bolt pattern. What I've started off with is I made a bushing that slides over top of the input shaft with a stub shaft sticking out about two inches and it sticks through this plate. So I've got the center figured out on this plate. Took a piece of wire, hooked it around there, put my screwdriver in, made a circle. That's roughly 14 and a half inches diameter. If I measure the inside of the bell housing, that's about two and a half inches in. It's about 14 inches, so I got a half inch, quarter inch all the way around to work with. Then I marked each one of these holes, um, drilled it with, uh, found the center of it, using a half inch punch with the center in it. I marked them, and I will now take it off, drill it with a 15, 30 seconds drill bit, and then tap the holes to a half inch, cut that plate out, and bolt it to the face of that grinding off the extra threads that are sticking out. Just watch, stay with me here. <laughs> I gotta keep going before I lose it in my head because it's over here somewhere. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty well centered around the input shaft. So I need to get some uh, shorter bolts. I don't have the exact right length so I can shave the top of that off. And then I'm gonna take my router and tie it to the input shaft and go around it until I have 14 inches. So I gotta figure out how to cut this. I can probably bring this to town and get this cut to the right length once I figure out my clutch. I wanna keep an original height from here before I weld that on. Then once it's welded, I can take the grinder and just cut the insides until I hit this bell housing so that the flywheel will fit inside. Does that make sense? Something like that. Here we go. All right, I think this is bias ply and zip ties approved. <laughs> and uh, that's probably about it. Um, <laughs> if you can see what I'm doing here, that's the input shaft sticking out with a piece of wire on my Milwaukee router. Now I've had this router for about 10 years. And I gotta tell you, it scares the shit out of me. So hopefully this works. I basically just gonna let gravity do its thing and start shaving it off so that we have a perfect circle all the way around. Um, we won't get everywhere, but that's a good starting point to start welding. I don't know. Um, anyway, see if this works. And go check out the uh, Bias Pie Zip Ties channel. Some pretty good stuff going on there. <laughs> This one has a little tip on it, and it's just hitting right here, so I have to cut that tip off. But actually, that's, uh, I'm okay with that. So I didn't want to take too much off, so I did it in two steps there, because I still got to measure my height where these clutches sit. Now, the spline's actually going too far. So, I had these made up. This is a new center for our clutch disc, so I got to grind these rivets off and pop these on. These are much longer. So Mr. Jerry at GVL Machining to the rescue. So these are the splines on the Audi input shaft. Uh, see the difference between the sizes? There we go. There's the two clutches. So the one will ride inside the other, but the splines are actually way over. Pretty neat, huh? The second disc, the splines actually start, start right over here. So that's pretty cool. So for now, I'll just machine screw them on um, in case I have to do a little bit more machining on the outside here for the release bearing and whatnot. Um, and then when it is all set, we'll take them to a cut shop in the city and we'll get them riveted properly. For now, I'll grind those off and then figure out exactly where my bell housing has to sit. Here we go. Okay, so I've got it close, so now I welded a nut that fits tight on the shaft and then drilled a hole in my router and threaded it quarter inch and now I can just 
tighten it half turn every time I go around for that final precise measurement. Here we go. All right, well, I don't think that's ever been done before, but that turned out pretty nice. Got a nice flat spot on the bottom, and that's the most meat that I can weld to. Pretty confident in that, actually. Turned out pretty nice, so. All right, another good haul at uh, VNR. I had a scrap block here, so I just had to cut the back of it off. So this is my bolt pattern for the bell housing, and now I can center the input shaft off of our crankshaft. Uh, I got a whacker for sale. Um, 800 bucks runs, I guess. I gotta get it running yet. It's not mine, I'm just selling it for one of the guys at VNR. Um, I got this. I don't know what it is, whether it's 4.8 or 5.3. I can use either one. And I got the center out of a transfer truck rim. Nice thick aluminum. I need the space from here to here um, as a spacer for the bell housing from the Audi to the GM. Um, this would be expensive. Otherwise, we tried a truck rim, pickup truck rim. That didn't quite work, but this is the right spacing, nice and thick. So throw that in the lathe, and we'll just cut that off and then shave it down to the right size, and we've got the perfect spacer for our bell housing. I'm gonna pull the heads off of those real quick, just because I'm curious whether it's 4.8 or 5.3, and somebody buy that, because I don't want to be responsible for storing that for a guy, and then six years from now go, hey, you owe me 800 bucks, so um, here we go. All right, so this is our McLeod double disc, uh, back from the machine shop, and uh, when you bolt the clutch down, you see the fingers come in, and as the clutch wears, the fingers will start coming out. Um, well, that's important for later. Uh, I'm gonna take the top off here. You see the one hub here, because the input shaft is in higher, I had this hub made, I only used uh, machine, machine bolts to uh, hold the hub in for now to make sure that we don't need to do any other machining. But the splines are actually, um, the splines start right about here and go up to here. And then the other clutch actually goes inside this one to uh, because the splines are too far up into the bell housing. Now we got an issue where the entire clutch fits inside the bell housing, but not uh, this little dampener. So what happens when you push on the clutch and, and release the tension, so what happens is this, this plate will actually move down and allow the uh, clutches to freewheel. And this is supposed to freewheel as well, but this is kind of a dampener, so you, it, it kind of softens the blow a little bit through this. But um, this is actually hitting the bell housing, so what we have to do is cut this, and this isn't cast, this is, uh, well this is cast, sorry, but it's cast steel, not cast iron. So what we can do is make a shoulder bolt. We're gonna, I'm gonna drill new holes, probably over here, or get the machinist to do it. We'll, we'll drill, we'll drill and tap holes in here, put a shoulder bolt in there that the, um, that that center plate is able to slide up and down on, and and uh, just goes back and forth uh, and it hits the shoulder, and then we can weld the end uh, shut, or if we stick it in far enough, I guess. Uh, if we've got the room there, then uh, we can drill the hole right behind this one. But for now, i got to cut this off to reassemble this entire clutch and see exactly where my measurements are when I bolt it down um, as to where the fingers end up compared to the release bearing. Once the fingers are down, i got to make sure that they move far enough without hitting these splines so that it releases the clutch. But... I need the release bearing to do that kind of at three quarter the end of its travel. I can't do the full travel because I don't have enough room in the bell housing. Um, so at about three quarter travel, it disengages the clutch. And then that allows for as the fingers to wear, as the clutches wear, to push that release bearing closer into the input shaft. So um, we'll machine that off. We'll put the clutch in the bell housing, make sure that the hubs actually catch the splines right in the middle so the entire spline is covered. Then we can work backwards as to where to um, machine the bell housing to so that it bolts up to the iron block properly. So once I have that spacing, then we can make the pilot um, for the input shaft 
and I've got the back of that engine to center that and then make a jig to hold it in place while we weld it. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, so what, what he did was I took the back of an engine block and cut it off. He milled that down. Then he bolted the um, bell housing to that plate. Then milled it down to the height that I needed, which was inch and five eighths. Then took the center bore of the crankshaft and then measured and made a little arm. Oh, that's still warm. That's still really warm. <laughs> he just welded that. And then he'll put that in the in the arm and he'll spin a perfect bore on the inside so that that will line up on the bell housing of the Audi. And then we've got the back half of the crankshaft where we'll make the pilot bearing in there and then that will center the input shaft when we weld it to make sure that it stays lined up. So hopefully that works. So now that we got a perfect lip on this we'll measure the inside diameter from here to here and cut the truck rim to the outside diameter of that, then we'll measure the transmission and the outside diameter of that bell housing will be the inside diameter of the truck rim. It's just that easy. And then we'll dial indicate off of the input shaft when we're welding just to make sure and we've got a GM bell housing on an Audi transmission. Okay. So I got my ring back, my spacer ring. This used to be a truck rim, but it was too thick. So it ended up being right here. I needed it to be right here. That's where my flywheel stops. And I gave myself an extra eight just to be safe. Um, so it was too thick. Now imagine that's because a, he needed some meat on the lathe in order to cut it and not warp it. So I called him back just to see and he's not picking up probably because he's got call display. So what I did was I put it in my table saw and just set the fence up and then just worked myself around. I had the blade up a little bit and then a little bit more and a little bit more and I, I didn't record that because I've already broken two cameras this month and if I cut my finger off and got blood all over the camera, Aaron would be upset about that. So, um, worked out really good actually, got a decent finish on it, and uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, not that it matters, because I still have one machine surface, and we'll just put that side up against my router bit. So, now I got my, my gap perfect, see that? You can just see the line, just like roofing, you want to see that chalk line, because otherwise you don't know where the line is. And uh, this outside diameter, fits perfect on the inside diameter of this. Problem is, my router ring was off by about 60 thou. So, it's able to do this. Not good. So, what I'm gonna do is cut the edges off here that I don't need. So, this is the flywheel, keeping three spots that have the proper face on it, because where the GM bell housing ends up with my double disc clutch in there is the exact same spot as where this ends up. So I need three original spots. So I'll grab a spot with holes in it that I can bolt a plate to this and bolt a plate to the bell housing. That will keep my bell housing square. Um, I'll cut off the rest because I might as well cut it off now. There's no point to it. But three spots where there's meat, I'll drill and tap a hole and then put a bolt in there with a nut on it and then push it out until it's perfectly centered. Now my machinist made these little rods that just go off the input shaft and push up against the bell housing and he made three of them so they should fit 100% in there um, and then make it tight. Then once I'm happy with where the location is, I'm gonna just swing by my welder I won't call him because he probably won't pick up. I'll just show up and see if he can tack it together. Then we'll bolt it on the car engine. <laughs> Put the bolt it on the engine and see if it fits in there where it's supposed to be. Uh, make sure that the pilot bearing is able to spin, that we can shift gears and lock onto the crankshaft, um, all that good stuff. If that's good, then I'll take it back to him again and uh, make sure I talk to him plenty so he stops welding. 
and doesn't warp the whole thing, and then we should be good to go. It's just that easy. And then we have a Quattro transmission hooked up to a GM bell housing. Now a couple of you asked if I could make a couple extra pieces and, and um, do that for you. I don't know right now, I don't have time, probably until March. And even if I did, I kind of want to be the only one. <laughs> but I will do it as soon as the race is over, Shoot, hit me up then. I'm not, I can't do it now, I'm sorry, I just have too much going on in the shop. All right, I spent a couple hours just polishing everything. I uh, want nice and shiny so that the welder's got, if you leave dirt in there or anything dirty actually, it'll make the weld porous and it'll pop, it'll look like shit for one and it won't be as strong. I got my set screws in there with my lock nuts, that one had to go on the outside, no room for that one, but that's okay. And then I centered it, this is a lot easier to do when you're not looking through the camera and you're using two hands, but anyway the stick goes all the way around perfectly so 100 percentedly problem with using a dial indicator is um, after we weld it I'm gonna get a whole new setting and even though it could be I don't know anyway the stick is easier to do once we tack it we'll put the stick in there and we'll make sure that's not touching anywhere um, and then we are golden so I made this plate, this has the bolt holes on the outside for this, it's got four of them, and the inside bolt holes for this, which pulls this tight against that, and then we've got a bunch of bolts tacked in on the back, or threaded into the back, so we can put that on, something like that, that'll hold it square, we'll tack it, put on the back of an engine before we weld it solid, and I got the back plate here. We'll bolt the actual bell housing to this plate, and when we weld it, and we'll just hold it upside down, or yeah, the, it'll be sitting like this, like that, like a pizza pie. That cast iron will keep this from warping, and then we'll keep this cold as we weld it, so it should be interesting, stick around. So I'm not even gonna dream about thinking of welding that bell housing myself. For that, I go see my buddy Ian at International Stretcher. If you ever get hurt off-road, it's probably one of his baskets you're gonna be brought to the hospital in. And uh, all he does is weld aluminum all day, every day. So I wanna thank Ian for all of his help on this project and go check out his, uh, his website and the stuff he does too. It's pretty cool. Um, he makes stretchers and he ships them internationally. So we're ready to take the plate off, and it's a good thing when you can do this. It means that it's not really twisted or warped, so that's good. Stay. So basically, this is just so that now I'm brave enough to cut the last of my references off, put the clutch inside, and then bolt it up to an engine block, make sure that the right amount of distances on the release bearing and then if all of that is okay we'll send it back we'll weld the inside solid we've got individual pieces made for in between each one of these and we'll weld that solid and then figure out what we're going to do with the starter because i might have to cut a piece of the ring out but we'll do that after we weld everything else solid so here's here's hoping oh. I can tell right away that I am happy with all of that. Perfect. Love it. It's a good day. On to the next step. So that's what we were aiming for. Tight there, tight there, tight there, tight there. Tight at the top. So. In theory, we're square. <laughs> All right, uh, when we got our transmission, we did not get a slave cylinder or a pivot or release bearing or the fork or anything that's meant for this transmission. So uh, I called up my buddy Andrew at Canada Catalyst, who if you need Volkswagen parts, he's your man. And he was able to get us the proper arm for it and the release bearing. 
Uh, problem was that we put in a twin disc clutch and we don't have the room for it. So we made this uh, little bracket here just to hold a newer model of a slave cylinder. And that's going to go right there. Stay. I'll bolt it in later. This is just for demonstration purposes. It takes about 3 sixteenths of an inch. Push on the fingers to release the clutch plates. So we've got more travel than that. We've got plenty of travel. As the finger, as your clutch wears, your fingers start coming out, so they'll be pushing towards the release bearing. So hopefully we've got enough room for that. We'll figure that out eventually. Clutch slides on just, just perfect, just perfectly, as perfect as a GM clutch would slide on an Audi transmission. And look at that. Look, look at those discs just sliding on. They're so nice. That's how much room we've got on the release bearing and oh she spins so nice so we're rubbing a little bit in one spot once we hit 6800 rpm i'm sure that'll disappear anyway that's what it is um again this all the movement will be taken up with the um once it's bolted to the crankshaft and uh yeah we've got pilot bearing and a bushing made for the crankshaft that we're putting it in but it's a pretty tight fit so I don't just want to put it in any crankshaft it's going in the crankshaft that it's staying in it's right where I want it to be so we will take this back to Ian tomorrow we can finish welding the whole thing then we'll bolt it in the car and then we'll probably take it out one more time we'll like we'll mock it up in the car take it back out and then run a whole bunch of fins I'd need to see how much clearance I have in my tunnel or if it's going to hit the steering or something stupid like that so once we do that, then we can run our, our runners right over our welds and she'll be just perfect. So here we go. All right, guys, uh, we've done a lot to get this out of where it is right now. Believe it or not, the first thing we ordered way in the spring was the transmission uh, and through hurricanes and a bunch of other stuff, uh, we did not get it until probably over a month and a half ago. And it hasn't been sitting idle for that entire time. A machinist or somebody's been doing something to it to make it fit our LS engine and fit inside this car. Um, good news is that we have pretty well everything that we need to make the car run and move. Uh, we did find our clutch pedals thanks to Sebastian. Thank you very much for helping us out. He's from Germany. He found a set for 39 euro. So we won't be hacking the Volkswagen clutch pedal in there. We have our O1E shifter, which thanks to Mike's auto parts. And the only things we need is the front axles, which I don't know the length until I get the tranny in there, and the drive shaft. We need to get length in that 10 inches, but I think my drive shaft shop can handle that. Uh, what we are still looking for is uh, some safety gear. Uh, we thought we had some stuff figured out, we didn't. Um, I think if you guys know anybody or you guys want to be a part of the project and help us out there, then uh, hit us up on debossgarage at gmail.com. We're also looking for seats. Uh, we do have the McLaren seats. They don't have the five point harness access and they actually weigh like 75 pounds each at least. So um, if you are in a company that sells those, we were talking to a couple companies, but they're really not enthusiastic in putting money into a 28 year old car. So now I want, now you guys know where we're at. You know that the turbos work. You know what we've done to the transmission. I honestly want your opinion. Comment down below whether we are gonna be competitive or whether we are gonna be a joke. I'm confident, just as confident as I was in the turbos that this is gonna work. Um, and if not, hey, we're having a lot of fun doing it. Thanks for watching and comment on a scale of one to 10. How cool is this project? Thanks for watching, here we go. Ray, Chris is on the way. You're watching? You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. You guys are watching. You're watching. What? The Boss Garage. <laughs> Subscribe.